Welcome back, Rust community, to another episode of Configure's Corner, where I teach you the basics and advanced levels of Rust electricity to bring your skills to the next level. Let's do this. Today, we're going to be exploring the neat core. Why this is going to be a staple circuit once you understand it is because if you use batteries and if you have a power source, you're going to realize you're going to want one of these. Okay? Why though? Why is this so magical? First of all, it was created by me, the great magical me. And what it does, it takes this power supply, right? It takes this power supply and it says, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and channel this power to power the main circuits, right? But what we're also going to do is take some of that power and passively charge your backup storage. Mmm, nice. But what this also does is, well, it, in, it, it mitigates a problem that a lot of people have with their circuits. You know, your power sources are usually going to be wind turbines or maybe... Um, you have some generators that just run out of electricity or maybe you're using solar panels whenever you're not producing enough power to power your circuit this thing's gonna detect it in through some wizardry flip-flop the circuit to make it where the battery becomes the main power supply and if if this isn't destroyed if someone didn't destroy this and that's the reason why it triggered um, it's just running low and you're still getting some power it's just gonna be redirected into just charging this instead and when this is producing enough output for your circuit again then the circuit here will detect it and through some wizardry flip-flop it back over okay where this is now again the main power supply for your circuit and passively charging your batteries yes yes so i think you can see why this is desirable all right now you can look at it and if you just want to plug it in go ahead pause the video here but i, I think it's worth knowing how it works because plugging it in is one thing and you're probably going to make mistakes if you don't know how it works understanding it is a different thing owning it is a whole thing beyond understanding it okay so let's 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 own this by understanding the behaviors of a splitter so how this splitter behaves is there's well there's a couple things that I want to uh, cover okay first of all when you turn on a splitter or when you give it power, um, it's going to output power in a particular way. And this is this this part right here that I'm showing you is specific to how this works, okay? So it first outputs power through output one, okay? Then the second output outputs power you, you, this all happens so quick you don't see it happen in this one two three order it all looks like it all turns on at the same time but it actually turns on one then two then three just like how I turn on these signs okay and when it turns off it does it in the same order first this loses power then this loses power and then this loses power okay now that you understand that so the way I'm gonna need to break down this knee cord to you is going to be in three parts the uh, normal state the trigger and the uh, triggered state all right so we're gonna do it in who the fuck is that I'm not gonna lie that scared the shit out of me 
Bro, you you fucking scared the dog shit out of me. I just turn around and I see you floating there. I nearly shit myself. I'm shooting a video explaining Rust over here. <laughs> Holy sorry, sorry, shit. Sorry. Dude, that's totally going to go in the video. Oh my god. All right, boys, let's get back to business. All right, so I said I was going to explain this and break it down like a football play in three different sections, right? Mm -hmm. I said the uh, normal default state, and then we have our trigger, and then we have our triggered state, right? Okay, let's do this. So we have our power supply. We have our power going to the branch, and this branch is forwarding. We declared 60 units of power to be forward to the memory cell. And this memory cell is forwarding the power to this OR switch. That then leads to whatever circuit you want to power. Yay. But we also have some leftover power because if we're only taking 99 and only passing away 60 of it, we have a remainder of 38 that we need to do something clever with. And that's what we do. Something clever. By passing the remaining amount of power from our source to our trigger mechanism, which will explain this funny looking thing here in a second. And the remaining power of that because we need to always set your... Uh, knee core right here that second branch to four because that's all you need to power the splitter okay and then the remaining of that power goes into passively charging it goes into this or switch and it passively charges your batteries okay so that's that's the normal default state right there okay now let let me tell you what the triggered state is not the trigger but the triggered state okay hash browns and, and potatoes you know what I'm saying like let me, let me tell you all right all right so let's drop this down say we put like our thing over here to like 60 units of power right our wind turbines fucking up and it's not producing the amount of power we need right and so as you can see, when we're not producing the power we need, um, there's not enough leftover power to power the splitter, which relieves all the electrical inputs it's pressing, which disengages it, which then kind of becomes like the detector or whatever, the uh, trigger mechanism, right? Um, and so... We're no longer passing power through here anymore through this branch because we don't have enough power to pass through here anymore. So we're still passing power into this memory cell, but because of this shenanigans, um, the power is no longer outputting through here. It's actually outputting through here, right? So now whatever power we're able to generate is going into our OR switch and powering our battery. So instead of powering our main circuit, it says, nope, we're going to go straight to the battery to compensate for the power loss here. And because our trigger isn't getting power, it relieves the blocker from being blocked. And it allows power to finally flow throughout here. Okay, now this is where the trigger comes in a little bit more. So, as I just said, the blocker is relieved. Okay, so what happens is power from here is no longer supplying this splitter. But when it's empowered, when it has power, when this, when this, to be more specific, when this splitter has power and is outputting power, output one is on set, output two is on reset, and output three is on the block pass through. And as you can imagine, when this loses power, 
it allows power to pass through the blocker. And uh, when this is on, remember I told you in the first video that memory cells have a hierarchy with these buttons on their side. The button on top is going to be listened to by the memory cell before it's going to listen to a button below. What I mean is this button has priority over this button and reset has priority over toggle and toggle it doesn't have any priority over anything. Weakling. By default, when this thing is getting power, it's saying, hey, you're gonna listen to me. I'm I'm pressing set, right? And remember I told you the order of it turning things on? So when it gets power, it's gonna say, I'm gonna power this first, and power this, and only this is going to get listened to. When it powers off, it loses power here, and that's the last wire that has power before all the power leaves the inputs. So when this thing turns off, the memory cell finally listens to reset because that's the last finger on the button. And it finally is like, oh, set's no longer getting power. I can finally listen to you, reset. And it says, okay, I'm going to go ahead and flip the power from output to inverted output or output right to left output or output left. And channel that power straight to the battery. Let's go ahead and plug that back in. Use the handy dandy new uh, coloring tool. Boom. Love it.